Thank you very much for joining me on this Sunday. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get into Lee, all the models and the incredible wave heights behind it. I put together a map for that ahead. And I want to get into a new system that is going to develop throughout the week. Doesn't mean it's coming at us in the Caribbean, but it is something we need to keep a close eye on as we go throughout the week. So I want to get out ahead of that, show you what I'm seeing with that. It's this area here. This is Lee. This is Margo, stay safely out to sea. A couple little tropical disturbances in here, but this is what I was talking about several days ago. It has now come off the coast of Africa, blob of rain and storms, and the conditions out ahead of it, pretty similar to what we saw with Lee, which is common for this time of year. They're conducive for development. Today is the actual peak of the hurricane season, so it is very common to be tracking things coming off the coast of Africa. That's where things form this time of year in the Atlantic uh, because of those trade winds, and then they hit the uh, warmer water temperatures. So, the atmospheric conditions are conducive for development. The models as well are picking up on that. You can see here the American model makes this area down the road a hurricane. The European model also makes it a hurricane. A little bit slower in development though. Uh, the European model keeps this as a tropical wave a little bit longer, develops it way down the road. The Canadian and the Icon, which is the German model, also make this a hurricane. So clearly it has my attention looking at the models and those atmospheric conditions. So I'll dive into Lee in just a second for my friends in Bermuda and especially up through uh, Canada. This here is that tropical disturbance that will march across. Now this is the American model which has been doing a pretty decent job and it's similar to all the other models. So I'll just dive into this right now. You can see here as we go throughout the week by mid to late week, I fully expect development out of this. By Thursday, this could already be a tropical depression or a tropical storm. So late in the upcoming week, this area here will be developing. Here we are in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, Barbados, uh, Dominica, Ceiba, Montserrat. And you see here, by the upcoming weekend, so this is a week from now, the possibility of a strong tropical storm getting closer to the Caribbean. It does not mean it's necessarily moving into the Caribbean. I'll tell you what I know and what I don't know. And uh, looking at about a week, week and a half from now, it's very hard to see the steering conditions. There's a lot of variables and you see it when I'm tracking Lee, again, showing you everything out there, there's a ton going on. So while I do believe something is going to develop, I don't know if it's going to move into the Caribbean yet or make that turn much like Lee did. Still a wait and see, but I do want to mention this because by the weekend, upcoming weekend, and early next week, there could be a pretty strong system out here uh, that we may have to watch out for very carefully. I'm on top of it for you. Know that I'm watching it. Please share this channel. Uh, put it out there for safety because as we watch this new, uh, I do this channel for safety. As we watch this new system, uh, I want to give everyone the heads up uh, best that I can about it, whether it comes in or whether it's a miss. And let's hope it's a miss. Now here's Lee. Lee's still on track. Winds uh, kind of uh, changing at times, very close to a major category uh, three hurricane, uh, about a category two now, all expected to make the turn. You see Turks and Caicos down here, Haiti, Dominican Republic. Here is Bermuda. This has been so on track. I haven't seen any significant changes overnight with the track of this. It'll be the speed of it though, as it gains latitude, systems speed up. So you know how it's been so slow, but once it makes its turn, it's going to speed up, which makes it a little tricky for Bermuda and Canada to kind of get a handle on when this may come in. Now we get a look at these tropical models as well. This is the American model and different variations of it, all showing very close to Bermuda. But on this heading, as I mentioned yesterday and the day before, if this holds and is enough off to the west, that would be excellent news, and this would be well off to the east of, say, the Carolinas, splitting Bermuda in the United States. We need that to hold for Bermuda. I'll dive into that specifically in a second. And then eventually heading close to New England in the Atlantic region of Canada. Doesn't mean it's going to move in yet. I'm hoping it takes a hook, but clearly a lot of the model indications are bringing this up toward Canada. So here's the Bahamas. Here's Florida, Carolina, as you get toward the mid-Atlantic, up through New England, you get over toward Nova Scotia, uh, Newfoundland, here's Bermuda. So this is today, watching the system. The next couple days, it is gonna really be slow, and I'll show you why in just a second. Why do these things slow down? Why do they turn? I'll get into that in a moment. 
taking a look at this, excuse my voice by the way, I got a little bit of a cold. This is going to be working its way up to the north starting Tuesday. That's when it's going to start to make that turn. So just slow the next couple days, then Tuesday, Wednesday making the turn and then accelerating. So by late Thursday into Friday, this uh, would be off to the west of Bermuda. The core of it would be to the west. If it holds on this heading, we'd get some tropical storm conditions in Bermuda, and then this would lift up to the north, not in the sh uh, same shape it is now. There'll be a weakening trend in this, cooler water getting combined with a front, and then the possibility of at least tropical storm conditions for the Atlantic region of Canada, and that would be uh, by the upcoming weekend, Friday into Saturday, uh, where we could, even into Sunday, where we could see potential impacts in Canada. Most indications are just to the east, of New England, Maine down through Cape Cod, but please, please in New England, keep a very close eye on this because we need to see when it makes its turn. Once it makes its turn, we'll know where exactly it's going to go. Now here's why it's turning, here's why it's stalling out. Here it is right here, and this is the European model, which has been really locked into the American model, uh, very similar. And you can see down here, there's a little area of high pressure and there's one up here. High pressure areas are blockers they don't allow things to move. So we've got one here, and that's keeping this down here right now, fortunately, safely to the north of the Northeastern Caribbean. That's been on track. We've been talking about that together for about a week. Then taking you out in time, this is early in the week. This is by Tuesday. Now it's still slow. I mentioned the areas of high pressure act as blockers. They can't, these systems can't really move around. There's actually one back to the south in the Caribbean. That's why we have been so dry in Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire. We haven't had as much rain as well in Venezuela and Colombia. So there's a blocker here. And this area of high pressure, while it builds back, is still kind of here. So we've got two areas of high pressure kind of sandwiching it. And that is why it is going to slow down. But what happens next is, this is the next front. This is what changes the pattern in what eventually grabs it. And the timing of that will be key for what happens down the road. Here's Bermuda right there. And you see the European model is actually coming into line more with the American model for the timing. It's speeding it up a little bit. I'll dive into that for Bermuda in a second. This is by the time we get into Friday, tropical storm impacts possible for Bermuda, and then eventually lifting up to the north. What happens for Canada? Still a little bit too early to tell, but that front grabs it and pulls it up near the Atlantic region of Canada as we work our way into the upcoming weekend. So looking Saturday, Sunday, potentially into Monday for tropical storm, even hurricane impacts for parts of Eastern Canada. Let me show you the wind field, then I'll dive into uh, Bermuda. You see it right here, the wind field, as these systems slow and kind of sit there, the wind field expands and we're starting to see that. This is the core of those hurricane winds. You see that yellow shading right in there? Those are winds of 145 kilometers an hour or 90 miles per hour. And then you see it here, all lifting to the north. Now, on this heading, on this track, yeah, it's gonna be windy. Southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, we'll get some gusty winds, but the tropical storm and hurricane conditions all stay off to the east at a safe distance, and then this lifts to the north, and this is why it's so, so critical uh, that the core stays off. It's still gonna be a pretty strong hurricane at this point. They'll be weakening as it lifts to the north, which is good, but I'm hoping this stays here and not here over Bermuda. So we need a slightly later turn, and then this would stay safely off to the east of the United States, or at least of the Mid-Atlantic as well. There'll be some gusty winds, say, over toward the Outer Banks of North Carolina, huge waves, but this would be just off to the west of Bermuda. The core of it would be to the west of Bermuda. So in Bermuda, of course, in the Caribbean, we are monitoring this clo closely. We're watching this for later in the week, and we need to see when it makes that turn. Now, specifically, the European model is starting to come into line of what the American model was thinking. European model yesterday was showing possibility of tropical storm impacts on Saturday. Now it's back to Friday. Both the models are showing the core of the system off to the west, and let's hope that happens. But Thursday into Friday, on the heading now, tropical storm conditions would be possible as Lee lifts up to the north and, of course, the higher seas. The hope is the core stays just offshore. Now, look at these waves. These are the wave heights. You see this white shading in here? Those are some wave heights, even that pink shading right in there. Those are some wave heights of 12 meters 
or 40 feet. And you see as the system, the wind field expands out, so do the waves, the swells work in, and you see these incredible waves uh, just uh, kicking up. There'll be erosion as we get back through the Bahamas and right up through the United States. And you see these wave heights, still that purplish shading in there and that pink shading, still those wave heights of about 40 feet or 12 meters as this system lifts to the north and that uh, way or that wind field expands, we're going to see those huge, huge wave swells, all that stuff. So we've got Lee. That is what I was just tracking for you. Margo, not an issue. And what's coming off the coast of Africa looks like it'll become Nigel. That's the next name on the list. We'll see if, if that happens. But Nigel is the next name on the list. Now, we've seen some rain in El Salvador. Uh, Panama, some in Colombia, there's that area of high pressure I mentioned, but Colombia back toward Panama, Costa Rica, better chance of rain. Now with Lee up here, there's been a couple spotty showers here. So watching Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, Barbuda may get a passing shower or storm with some of those feeder bands with Lee. This is Hova, which was a category five hurricane just a few days ago. That is weakened, that is falling apart, not seeing any other development in the Eastern Pacific. So here is Lee later today, few showers and storms, Puerto Rico, we could get a couple showers passing by. A little bit heavier toward Panama, Costa Rica, isolated flooding, a potential. Trinidad, we have been so, so dry. If you are on the, or so, so hot, if you are on the dry side, you're on the hot side. That's how that, this uh, pattern works. As we work our way into tomorrow, a little more action over towards Central America. Cuba, spotty shower, same thing. My friends in Jamaica, Cayman Islands, and then watching this, there is Lee starting to make its turn as we work our way into Tuesday of this upcoming week. Looking at the forecast, then I'll recap. Puerto Rico, 40 to 50% chance of showers and storms. 30 to 40% chance U.S. Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands. Antigua and Barbuda, as I mentioned, there could be a couple showers kind of kicking by with Lee to the north. And in Anguilla, the same thing. Could see a couple showers passing by. 30% chance the next two days, St. Kitts and Nevis and uh, Montserrat. 20% chance today, St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. And a 20% chance today as well, Trinidad and Tobago. And as I mentioned, on the very hot side, if you stay on the dry side, Grenada, same thing. Very limited chance of rain, especially southeastern Caribbean. Barbados, 30% chance of rain today. Only a 20% chance today in St. Lucia. We work our way to St. Vincent and the Grenadines the next three days. The rain chance stays on the small side. 30% chance today in Jamaica. A 40% chance tomorrow in Jamaica. We swing back here. To Belize, some scattered showers and storms, not for all of us, but a slight bump up in the rain chance by tomorrow. Yucatan and Mexico, 30% chance. 30% chance we'll be holding right through the Cayman Islands as we work our way into early in the upcoming week. Bahamas, 20 to 30% chance, of course, the very high seas. We're going to be seeing those building. There could be some overwash along the uh, right along the uh, coastal sections. Of course, we've got 700 islands uh, across the Bahamas and uh, di different sizes, of course. So some flooding will be possible just because of the elevated seas and those cla uh, crashing waves. Same thing as we get into Turks and Caicos. Rain chance today, 20%. Isolated shower storm popping up in the afternoon in Haiti. 40% chance still holds in the Dominican Republic and Aruba back through Curacao and Bonaire, mainly dry conditions as we work our way forward into Guadalupe, passing shower storm the next few days, 20% chance today in Dominica, not a whole lot, 20% chance today in Martinique, a 30% chance tomorrow. We get back through Costa Rica and Panama, even parts of Western Colombia, Northwestern Colombia, rain chance will be a bit higher today. Isolated shower storm in Northern Venezuela, 20% chance today in Guyana, and a 20% chance today in the next few days as we get into Surinam. So it is busy. We've got Lee and we have this new system. Lee will start to make that turn on Tuesday, watching Bermuda, Canada, of course, keeping an eye on New England <clears throat> as we get down the road. Nigel will be uh, trying to form. That's the area off the coast of Africa. I don't know where it's going to go yet, but I do believe that is going to be developing it or developing. So I'll be watching how close that does get to the Caribbean. Today is the peak of the hurricane season. Hurricane season goes through the end of November. Usually it's very active through October and then it really starts to back off. But it is very active now. I'll take it storm by storm with you. I appreciate you being part of this weather community. I go through those comments. Thank you for those kind words. I hope you have a good Sunday ahead.